Hey everyone, I'm Johnny Roven. I am a, an attorney licensed in California, Nevada, and I just want to be discussing uh, just an overview of employment law. It's a very vast topic and I get many, many questions about different areas of the law. So I just want to kind of give an overview as to what it means to practice in the area of employment law. So what is employment law? It's essentially the law that governs relationships between the employer and the employee. There's different types of aspects. It, uh, it, it's not necessarily where a person gets injured in the workplace. That's more of a workers' compensation situation. And it's not exactly where a it's a third party vendor, true independent contractor situation where a person actually is an independent contractor. It's very hard. I'm not talking about situations where people actually get misclassified because that is a very common aspect of it, but where a person is uh, actually is an independent contractor, like some straight third party vendor. The, these are separate areas of the law. Uh, they don't, they aren't part of employment law, but I do want to go through many of the aspects of employment law and just give an overview of the common themes that we come up with in the employment law uh, scenarios, issues, situations that I commonly see. So uh, the, the basic employment laws, they, they govern several aspects. So one of the major, major themes of employment law is wage and hour aspects. Now this comes in terms of overtime, uh, meal and rest breaks, itemized statements, your pay stubs, they have to be accurate, uh, non-payment of wages, unfair business practices. So there's several different themes and within all of these themes, which we call uh, causes of action, uh, there's different types of violations that an employer can come across in order to incur liability. So for example, many times, at least in Southern California, people are getting uh, not paid their, paid their fair, wa fair wages left and right. Uh, and employees generally owed overtime, time and a half if they work over eight hours a day or 40 hours a week. And many times the employers just don't wanna pay these wages. So what they'll do is they'll falsely calculate uh, how the hours are done or they just will pay straight time, meaning just the straight hourly rate for every time that they that the employee should be getting overtime wages. Uh, sometimes they engage in some time shaving where, they, where the employer actually goes into the payroll system and reduces the number of hours that the employee actually worked. It's a terrible thing, but it happens very, very often. But uh, the employees have rights. They have a lot of rights and the legislature the uh you know, our government has written laws so that it encourages attorneys in order to take on these cases so a lot of the times attorneys will be able to get attorney's fees on top of the wages that a person is supposed to get at least in california so another theme is the meal and rest breaks a lot of times employers will grind their employees to work through their breaks or to not take their uninterrupted breaks. And for the record, an employee is entitled to 10 minutes every four hours or of a rest break in California or 30 minutes every five hours for uh, uninterrupted breaks. And many times this does not happen. Employees often get just pressured to work right through it or they get guilted to working through it and the employers start to uh, try, try and avoid the responsibility of that. So these are just some of the topics that, that we go through. Um, a, another major theme is discrimination. So a lot of the times what we see in employment law is a person gets injured on the job or they get injured outside of work and they need to take some time off. And so there will be some kind of disability discrimination. A disability is generally is something that substantially limits major life activities. And what that means is if a person's unable to do things in the normal course of their day that they normally would have been able to do, like getting out of bed, taking a shower, driving, walking, putting on clothes, if they're not able to do that, at least for some period of time, they could be legally disabled, uh, meaning that the employer if they fall under certain areas, uh, fall into certain requirements, have to 
do certain things. For, for example, they have to have a conversation with the person. They have to have an interactive process where they try and figure out, okay, what can this person do now, now that they have this disability, at least for the time being, while they recover, and they have to try and provide a reasonable accommodation if they fall into certain categories. Many times employers try to avoid this, and instead they will look for some fake reason, which we call pretext, in order to dismiss an employee or just get rid of them after they get injured. Um, another form of discrimination is uh, race discrimination, where a person, because of the color of their skin, uh, or where their ethnic discrimination, where they come from, um, will not be hired or not be put into a certain position because of the discriminatory practices of the employer or they, they won't get promoted because they are of a certain race or of a certain ethnicity or of a certain national origin. These are very common themes. Uh, what falls closely with discrimination but isn't exactly discrimination is harassment where a person is actually being harassed in the workplace based on their protected class meaning whether it's their race, gender, ethnicity, orientation, disability. And so a lot of times people will be in the workplace and they'll be called racial slurs or uh, made fun of because of a disability or very sexist comments. So this is in the form of harassment, but not necessarily litigation because it doesn't affect some aspect of the uh, discrimination. I mean, because it doesn't affect some aspect of the employment, uh, of the terms of the employment. It, merely, it just, it, it affects what is happening to the person in the workplace. And there's elements, there's things that you have to prove in order to show those kinds of lawsuits as well. Um, so as you can see, it's a very vast area. There's all sorts of types of claims. We, we in terms of wrongful termination, a person gets terminated against uh, for something that's against uh, public policy. So a person may be complaining about certain things and then they get terminated. That is a form, that could be a form of wrongful termination or if they complain that they're being harassed or discriminated against and then they get fired for it, that could be wrongful termination uh, in violation of public policy. And so there's all sorts of ways that we go about it. What happens, generally speaking, is that the government, the legislature, will come up with certain laws that they'll pass, and then it's up to the courts to interpret how those laws are supposed to apply in certain factual scenarios. So it's a very extensive practice, and it is a very vast practice, and the laws are changing very constantly uh, because there's a lot of litigation, and there's a lot of mistakes and it keeps us employment lawyers very, very busy. But it's still important to do these videos and inform the public of what is going on. And especially now with COVID uh, coming out, there has been many changes in the law. Uh, the courts and attorneys are struggling to find guidance and provide guidance in regard to these laws. And there's rapidly, rapidly changing topics as to how to navigate these new processes. Um, so th this is just a brief overview. There's going to be a lot of specifics and it's very important to consult with an attorney because each case can be extremely fact specific. Uh, and it really just depends on very specific situations and what has happened and how things kind of evolved in the workplace. So it's really important to discuss these things with an attorney to see where exactly the law can land uh, in, in your particular situation. And it's also important to uh, do a little research and go online and see about your specific case. As I said before, it's a very vast area. It's very, uh, there's all sorts of different trips and falls that uh, employers and employees can get into along the way. So uh, my recommendation is when you're looking for an attorney that you look for someone who deals with employment law situations because there's a lot of ways that uh, and not just the party, but also the attorney can screw up along the way. So I hope this, in this information was uh, useful and let me know if you have any questions and look forward to sharing more videos.